Okay, so don't keep your lithium iron phosphate batteries charged to 100%. We had a storm here yesterday, Christmas Eve, and lasted, started be, before Christmas Eve, ran through Christmas Eve, right up till the morning of Christmas Day here in Atlantic Canada and uh, it dumped about two feet of snow and it was wet snow if you look at a couple of my previous videos I, it shows that the trees were just hung over so uh, I was concerned that the power might go out it never did but I was concerned about it so uh, I charged my battery bank charge this up to a hundred percent I've already dropped this down to I'm not sure what it was no didn't turn on there no, okay hmm. still didn't turn on okay so uh, I charged that up to a hundred percent guess it just didn't hold in long enough so I charged the battery bank up to 100% and I charged three of my batteries up to 100%. Uh, battery D, it was already 80% so I wasn't too concerned about that. But I had uh, done some tests on, on A and B so they were down around 40% so I had to charge them up. The main reason why you don't want to leave your batteries charged to 100% is on your anode, when your lithium ions are, are going through your separator plate and they're propagating, I guess you'd call it, in the graphite on your anode, what happens is when, when you're up to 100%, it's putting stress on the anode like it's fully charged and the lithium ions actually want to go back because they were original originally in the, the metal oxide they started here to begin with and then you you charge the battery and they go from here go through the uh, lithium there's some lithium in the uh, electrolyte they go through the separator and they they collect in the graphite on the anode the uh, ions go this way and during charge the electrons go this way because the chargers across there and charging it up I'm not sure if it's negative here and it's pulling them this way. I'm not sure exactly, but what I'm trying to stress is that it it puts stress on the anode, on all the anodes in your cells. They're, like each cell is depend on how it's made it uh, has a graphite I think it's graphene myself it doesn't matter so it's putting a lot of stress on that and like I say it wants to go back to where it originated from so what the best thing you can do is discharge it to 80% or more discharge it down to 80% state of charge. So today while I was out snow blowing stuff, I dropped battery A down to 43.4 amp hours 
Solder's roughly 55 amp hours left state of charge. Uh, battery B. Actually, I'm doing that right now. I'm just discharging it with 5 amps. I'm discharging it quite slow. 43.4 amp hours. It took me 8 hours and 39 minutes. That's how long. I, I just decide to discharge them slow. And that's what I'm doing. Is I'm just discharging them slow. I charge them quite fast. I charge them at 20 amps. But if you look at my previous video. I also started off with 5 amps. Then went up to 10 amps. And then I went to 20 amps. To, when, to charge them up fully for the storm. So I don't want to make this too long. The main concept here is don't leave your batteries fully charged. If you have a storm coming or something and you want to be prepared if, if the power goes out, sure, charge everything to 100%. But after the storm's over and there's, there's no chance, well, there's always a chance, but if you feel safe enough to drop your batteries down <coughs> to 80%, do it. Don't keep it at 100%. Drop it down to 80%. You still have lots of capacity in your batteries, but you don't have the stress on the anode. You don't have the stress on your, on your batteries that you would have at 100%. All right. Everybody have a great day. Cheers.